This is ActRaiser for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Look at that Mode 7 Go. This is one of my favorite games for the Super Nintendo. It really isn't difficult, but it's just one of those games I can pick up every now and then and start playing it and not realize how much time has passed. It isn't a very long game once you've played through it either. It can be finished within a couple hours, but it's an enjoyable experience. The game has a variety that isn't even found in its own sequel, and it tends to be a game that is praised for being so unique. When you first start the game, it kind of just dumps you into this interface that doesn't really make too much sense. You have control of a flying palace, which I guess is sort of supposed to be heaven, maybe, and you fly to different locations on the world map to fight bad guys. You start out at the first stop, so you just choose fight monsters and your journey begins from there. There are two types of gameplay in this game. The first is a platform style hack and slash similar to Rastan, and the second is sort of like a really easy version of SimCity or Populous. During the creation phases, you control a small nameless angel that assists you in directing the construction of roads, killing monsters that terrorize the people, and performing miracles. In the side-scrolling platform stages, you control your avatar on Earth that goes into the enemy layers and takes out the sources of evil. The master is basically God. You create life and then defend it. There's a boss at the end of every stage, and some of them look really good. This boss from the first level always impressed me at Nintendo Power when the SNES was first being released. Just look at all those colors. Once you finish a level, your avatar is relieved of duty, and since this was the first part of the Fillmore area in the game, the land is now free of visible evil and is ready to be populated. This is where the creation phase starts, or the sim phase as the game calls it. The sim phase starts with a man and a woman being created. They worship you from a temple in the town, and the city is created from there by you clearing the land and directing their town's construction. As the population increases, you level up and gain more health. Sometimes the populace will find items that will increase your magic and health as well. At this point, the game basically goes back and forth between modes. You find new land, you vanquish the evil attached to it, build a small civilization on that land, something bad happens, and then you have to kill the bigger evil of that land. Everyone then loves you and you move on to the next area. Sometimes you will be offered gifts and that can be used to solve other nations' problems, such as the gift of music or wheat. It's also possible to learn spells from the sim mode that you can then use in the combat mode. The Stardust spell seems to be the best choice for most bosses, though the spinning orb one works pretty well too. The spells are very powerful and they can make most boss fights just stupidly easy where you can just spam your spells and the boss dies. My favorite part of the game is the Bloodpool and Cassandra sections. At one point in the game, the citizens of Bloodpool start to fight with each other, and the two people at your temple don't know how to stop the fighting. You're given the gift of music from Cassandra, and the music soothes the people of Bloodpool. The song is called Sasagemono, or The Gift. The song is really full of emotion and just blew me away as a kid. It's still one of my favorites. This leads me into the music, which is absolutely top-notch. 
Yuzo Koshiro is the composer. He's also famous for the Shinobi and Streets of Rage soundtracks, which are nothing like this but are equally impressive. Fillmore and Bloodpool's action theme seem to be the most popular tunes from the game, but it all is most excellent. The sim portion of this game is fun but very easy. I honestly don't think it's possible to die or lose in this phase, so it isn't exactly challenging. The action scenes are straight up platforming goodness and fans of traditional 2D games will really enjoy it. This game isn't on the pricey side and really is a must have in any SNES collection. It provides a variety of gameplay that makes it very unique and it presents everything with stories that unfold across multiple peoples. Each section of the game has its own tragedies and resolutions, and all of this combined is what makes you care about the world that is given to you in ActRaiser. Raiser. 